Adding and subtracting decimals is just as easy as adding and subtracting any other number. The trick is to keep the decimals lined up. For example, if I wanted to add 452 plus 78, I would want to make sure I keep my numbers in the right place. For example, let's try putting 78 underneath 452. This is a common mistake that students make. In this problem, the 7 is in the tens place and the 8 is in the ones place, but I have the 7 lined up under the hundreds place and the 8 under the tens place. This isn't going to work. To solve 452 plus 78, I need to make sure that the ones place stays lined up, the tens place stays lined up, and the hundreds place stays lined up. The same is true for adding and subtracting decimals. For example, if I wanted to add 4 and 5 tenths plus 12 and 6 tenths, I would need to make sure that my numbers stayed lined up. I couldn't write 4 and 5 tenths like this because in 4 and 5 tenths, the 4 is in the 1's place, but I have it lined up under the 10's place. And the 5 is in the 10th's place, but I have it lined up under the 1's place. I have to make sure to line my numbers up, and a good way to do that is to keep the decimals lined up. So if I have 12 and 6 tenths on top, I'm trying to line up 4 and 5 tenths. A good way to start is just to get your decimal underneath the other decimal. 4 and 5 tenths. Now I have the tenths lined up, the ones lined up, and the tens lined up. Let's try adding. 5 and 6 make 11, and I'm going to regroup just the same as I would if there wasn't a decimal there. 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, and 1 plus nothing is 1. One important difference here is that wherever the decimal is in the problem, it also needs to stay lined up in the answer. So 12 and 6 tenths plus 4 and 5 tenths equals 17 and 1 tenth. Let's try a subtraction problem. Just like with adding, it's the same as subtracting normal numbers. You just have to make sure to keep the decimals lined up. So let's try 56 and 7 tenths, we're going to subtract 11 and 24 hundredths. When I rewrite this problem vertically, going up and down, I need to make sure that the decimals stay lined up. So I'm actually just going to start by writing a decimal right underneath the decimal in 56 and 7 tenths. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of my number. So my number had 11 before the decimal and 24 after. Now let's try subtracting. So when I go to subtract, I notice a problem. There's not actually anything above the four, which seems funny, but I can actually just fill in a zero there because 7 tenths is 70 hundredths. Now it looks like a little bit more what I'm used to. I can subtract. I can't do zero minus four, so just like I would normal subtraction, I'm going to regroup by taking a group away. This becomes a 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. 6 minus 1 is 5. And 5 minus 1 is 4. And then probably the most important thing I need to remember to do is to drop my decimal down in the exact same place lined up in my answer. So 56 and 7 tenths minus 11 and 24 hundredths equals 45 and 46 hundredths.